but most often in the studio, good producers know the benefit of having, and good artists know the benefit of having other good musicians and players contribute. And so a lot of their contributions come into play as the song evolves in a, in a rehearsal time playing it down. So that's where parts come into play. So as I'm listening to the song, let's say, for, I didn't, let's say I didn't know this song, and I'm hearing it for the first time, Don's saying, okay, here's the song. My first inclination is I'm going to have either a, a, a tablet or, or the chart out, and I'm going to be making notes. And all throughout the song, as it's evolving, I'm making notes, okay, diamonds for the intro. That works. I don't need to do anything else. I'm diamond and pad. And so I make a little small note, diamonds, pads. It's that simple. And then I know that as it gets into the, the chorus, this song actually picks in, goes into a little more of a chunking part. And so at that point, I might put chunks, you know, but that, let's say I get to the first chorus and uh, I'll get the right key. How can I forget? So now I'm making my notes start changing. I'm not doing pads. I've backed off of the atmospheric sounds. I don't have a competing delay or anything. And I know that on uh, the first chorus, it's chunks or it's eighth notes. I can just make a simple note eighths or it's quarters. And those kind of no, that kind of notation helps you, even in a worship setting, it helps you pay attention. Let's say, and then let's say I get to the the a section in a song where I'm going to create a another part. Uh, maybe it's a bridge in any song, and all of a sudden I'm doing a line, or some other line. So a part can be that simple, or it can be this. A part can can be constituted by anything that you come up with. Parts are often just this simple. So whatever notation you need to use is what's important. It's not so important that theoretically you need to explain that for somebody else. You need to explain it to yourself. Because the point is this to me. In worship, you've got a song. A lot of times we enter it with the approach that it's like an all skate. Okay, everybody play. First one that gets to the end wins. And that's not the way a, a song develops. And that doesn't make for a good song. What makes for a good song is when it's a journey, everybody's contributing, but they're being tasteful. They're listening to the other players. And so your chart and your notes become really important because you can't remember, let's say, 30 songs in a set. Don's famous for having 30 times 30 songs in a set. He's got more songs than we know what to do with. So at any point, a song can come, and especially if you have a volume of songs within a worship set, it's important that you know going from song to song some of the notes. So I always have a little uh, a mental note or I have a, a physical note where I've got the key, the signature, any special notes about sections in the song. And it may be that I know the entire song really well, but when it gets to the bridge that maybe that's shaky or I don't remember it or we just learned the song then I might have more of a note for that. But what's happening is I'm making parts for these songs in my mind so that when we're playing down the song, rather than just going to the end of the song, I know that I'm contributing parts. So in general, uh, think about a song as a journey. Figure out what your color and your texture and your taste needs to, to be as part of the contribution.